quartal harmony is a type of harmonic language where chords are built from stacks of intervals of fourths instead of intervals of thirds. Chords that are built from thirds, like what we're used to, C major, F major, G7, that kind of thing, that type of harmonic language is called tertian harmony, and stacked fourths is called chordal harmony, which is what we're talking about here. Chordal harmony is useful in modal jazz because in modal improvisation, we are playing not really in a key, but in a mode. And in the mode, which is a type of scale, every note in the scale is kind of equally a good note, other than just that we have a root of the mode. Every other note is kind of a chord tone. And there's no functional harmony in modal jazz. There's no uh, better or worse notes other than just that kind of main center root note, such as improvising in the mode of Dorian, which is the second mode of the major scale. And you don't need to understand that to do what we're gonna do here. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can comp over the tune So What by Miles Davis with chordal harmony. And we're gonna use just one physical chord shape on the guitar to do it because this stacked fourth chord shape just on the guitar, we get to just move it around and other instruments don't get to do that. They'd have to actually change what they do, but it's just kind of a structure we can move and it sounds tasty, sounds melodic. It's very accessible and really fun. So let's do it. Let's comp with chordal harmony over the tune So What by Miles Davis. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I have courses that help guitarists express themselves more freely and confidently through musicianship skills like improvisation, technique, fretboard theory mastery, arranging, and more. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I have new video lessons every week on this channel. Let me give you some context here. First, what is a mode? A mode means that we are playing a scale, but we are treating a note from the scale that is not the root of the scale, we're treating a different note of the scale as the root. Okay, the best way to show you and give you an example is by playing it so you can hear it. Here's a C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. That's the root of C. Okay, if I take another note, say I'll take the uh, second note, because that's what we're gonna use in this lesson, and I call that one instead, ah, now, even without worrying about what we number them, and I play from that note and then up an octave and back down. Same collection of notes, but I'm treating that second note of the major scale as the main note, as kind of the home bass. And that is all a mode is. So this is called the Dorian mode. And it's the second mode of the major scale because we're taking the second note and we're calling it the root, we're calling it the home bass, we're calling it the main note. And it has that sound. And if you want to explore modes, practice them in that way where you take a major scale and then you take one of the notes that kind of sound that is the third mode of the major scale because i focused on the third note of the scale and treated it as the root and treated it as the home base so that's all we need to know about modes right now that is what a mode is the tune so what by miles davis is in dorian mode and as you can see from the lead sheet here from this app, iReal Pro, it says D minor 11. And then for the B section, it goes up to E flat minor 11. Then it goes back down to D minor 11. Well, this is um, an approximation of, this is the best way to try to indicate Dorian mode with our tertian chord symbol system. So it's not really D minor 11, it's D Dorian. But when we're limited to chord symbols, um, this is how it's often written out. So D is the root, and D minor 11 is a way to make sense of uh, D Dorian because it just includes the root, it includes the fourth of the scale, it includes the flat seven, it includes the five, it includes the flat three. It gets this sound, which is a chordal sound, because if I play the root, the four, the flat seven, the three, those are all stacked fourths. Fourth away, fourth away, fourth away. Okay, I'm just going over this quickly. We want to get to the actual comping the hands-on part, which is the point of this lesson. But D minor 11 is just an approximation of um, how can we try to say D Dorian with chord symbols. So that is, uh, so really when you're thinking of this tune, um, I'm thinking of all of these notes. as being equal, 
except for the root, which has really the gravity, the main gravity to it. So there is a root to it. And otherwise there's not really, there's not a one, three, five, seven, that kind of thing. It's just Dorian mode. One more quick thing, and then I'll show you the shapes that you need to comp over the tune and you'll be off to the races. The tune itself uh, famously has this sound. This chord voicing is a fourth interval, then another fourth interval, then another fourth interval, and then a third. Okay, so what's the third doing in there if we're doing chordal harmony? Well, this note here, if you move it down to the lowest string, now we have all fourths. Fourth, 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 fourth. So it's an inversion of a pure chordal chord shape by taking this low note and putting it up to the top we're still in that harmonic language, very much a chordal chord. So if you want to hear that classic sound, you can practice that. And we're going to do even simpler shapes than that. I just wanted to share it. One more thing about this tune that we should acknowledge, and that's that uh, it also very famously has this uh, unique approach to changing the harmony in that it just goes up a half step for the bridge, then it goes back down. So for uh, we have 16 measures here of D Dorian, and then you have eight measures of E flat Dorian, and then eight measures of D Dorian, and that is the whole tune. Okay, here's the fun stuff. Here are the shapes that we need. If we make this chord shape right here, I'm gonna give this to you fifth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret on strings four, three, two. Okay, I would bar these two. You don't have to, you can play them on the tips of your fingers, but it's easiest to bar the fourth and third string and then use your first finger on the sixth uh, fret there in this case okay that shape is all we need we're going to move it all around if you go up a whole step with that those three notes are in the d dorian scale if you go up another whole step those three notes are in the d dorian scale so memorize this fret five seven nine they're all kind of like a whole step apart i think of this as kind of the hub you can use just that if you want to okay now on what i think of as the left side towards the neck of the guitar towards the head of the guitar, I mean. Go three frets over, and you have this shape, okay? And if you worked all this out, if you if you, if you you were curious and said, are those all in the C major scale? Or D Dorian, you know, whatever way you wanna think of it. Are they all in there? Well, yes, they are all in there. These are all the places that we can make this exact structure, a fourth and a fourth stacked on top of each other along these three strings. We get a lot of action out of it if we just map these out. There are other chordal chords like this one. Okay, that's really cool to play with too, but I'm giving you the simple version that is just so fun to run with as soon as you get these shapes down. So you have these three, kind of as your hub in the center of the neck here, and then you go down three frets to get the same shape here, and then you can go down a whole step. This includes the open strings, but yeah, can go down a whole step there, okay? Same thing on the other side towards the body of the guitar. If you go up uh, three frets higher and then a whole step, then you get those as well. So now we have, interesting what has happened here. We have outlined a pentatonic scale. We've harmonized a pentatonic scale with this chordal shape. Okay, so that's all you need to know to play with it. Then it's just on you to play rhythms and phrasing and and just enjoy it over the tune when it goes to the e flat dorian you do have to go up a half step and everything shifts all that structure so you have these three in a row and then you have three frets down over here three frets up and a whole step over there and that's it then we can just give it a go okay let's play with it All about the phrasing now, whatever you want to play. I like to repeat ideas like that. Now, up a half step. down a half step just drill it like this if you want to get used to the vocabulary 
just up and down with the with the backing track going. You can just you can just get a backing track on YouTube easy, and then add chromatics and stuff if you want. Okay, and just try to repeat things so the phrasing feels nice. I like to play these short little bursts of kind of punches of chords. Okay, now I'll show you how at solo guitar gigs, um, I'll play this tune. And I'll mess around with the, the melody and in the breaks instead of just doing this. I'll play around with all of that. Um, so you can fill in some space, play a little single note, play the comping chords, um, or even just play melodies with the comping chords or, you know, do whatever you want with it. I'll give you a bonus tip in one second for how you can use this exact sound in normal 251s in functional harmony on normal tunes. But first, if you want a resource to have all the diagrams of all of the scales that are needed to play in any tonality, you can get that for free with the link in the top of the description. There is a PDF, PDF download link there, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. It has all of the parent scales needed, all the diagrams for them in all of the forms and shapes and positions on the guitar. They're called parent scales because from the parent scales, you can find all of the modes of those scales. So you can take any visual diagram and just look at it and say, oh, what if I practice from the three to the three, up and down an octave there, you're gonna get the sound of the third mode of whatever scale you are playing with. Or you can just use that to drill your scales and, and uh, map out the guitar as we all kind of need to be working on the fundamentals all the time. So quick bonus tip here, you can take this exact language and play it over a normal two, five, one. Here's D minor. G7, C major. So during the D minor, well, it's the two chord of a key. Yes, we're in, we're not in modal sound, but if you want to get that for a second, you can get that kind of modern sound over typical harmony by playing with those exact same shapes. So, so it works as kind of like a two, five, one thing or anywhere there's a two chord. I post a new lesson video every single week. Next week's lesson is going to be how to get started improvising for jazz beginners on the tune Tenor Madness by Sonny Rollins. It's just a basic B flat blues progression. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you so much. Take care, happy practicing. And for now at least, I'm juggling at the end of my videos just for fun. And I've been practicing this where the red one goes over the top. Whoa. Kind of hard to do at this in the tiny desk space here okay take care see you next time